it is time to take out the trash because this month there was yet another fake claim that a big announcement of the discovery of intelligent alien life is imminent from astronomers. And just to be clear, there's not. And I got so mad. <laughs> Maybe it's just because this is the tip of the iceberg of so many fake discovery claims that circle the internet, especially when it comes to JD Brewer's tea for some reason, which are all absolute, as the Americans say, trash. Trash, trash, trash. trash. And this week, I have reached my limit and I'm gonna take it all out on BLC1, Breakthrough Listen Candidate one, a radio signal detected back in 2019, which was already shown to be radio interference back in 2021. But this month, a documentary filmmaker claims to have spoken to someone at the University of Oxford who has links with the Breakthrough Listen project, who yes, are hunting for signs of intelligent alien life in radio astronomy data. And he's claimed that announcement from Breakthrough in the University of Oxford about BLC1 is imminent. I am an astrophysicist at Oxford and I can tell you that me and my colleagues all laughed so hard at this news report. I mean, I did make sure to email my colleague, Dr. Steve Croft, who's the project scientist for the Breakthrough Listen project and just double check, BLC1, you definitely concluded that was radio interference, didn't you? And he was like, yes, yes we did. So in this video, we're gonna dive into everything we know about BLC1 and put this fake news rumors to rest completely. We'll start first with its detection back in 2019 and why it was initially thought to be a promising techno signature of intelligent alien life. And then we'll chat about how it was actually ruled out as a real techno signature and was instead radio interference. And then finally also chat about how no recurring signal has ever been detected since. And it's worth stating now that all of this information is also on the Berkeley website, the home of the Breakthrough Listen Project, where they link to all of the research papers as well. And if there ever was an official announcement from Breakthrough Listen that they had found evidence of a signal from intelligent alien civilizations out there, then that's where the official announcement would be. Now, websites like this are all written in HTML and JavaScript coding languages. And I picked up these languages during my PhD and I managed to use them to code up my own website. But if you don't know how to code, that can be a really big barrier to creating a website, either for yourself or for your business. But that's where Squarespace comes in, the sponsor of this week's video. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that makes it so easy to create a beautiful, professional-looking website. They've developed what they're calling design intelligence, combining two decades worth of industry-leading design expertise with cutting-edge AI technology to help you build a beautiful, more personalized website tailored to your unique needs. Which, if you're like me, without a single artistic bone in your entire body, you will greatly appreciate. Squarespace just makes all the difficult things about having an online presence just easy, from listing and selling products with seamless checkout processes for your customers, to email blasts, to analytics to track your hits and sales. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash Dr. Becky to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now let's dive into everything we know about BLC1 and start with its detection back in 2019 by the Breakthrough Listen Project, which is a dedicated survey of the 1 million closest stars to Earth for what's known as techno signatures, i.e. evidence of intelligent alien life existing. Now it's a very similar term to biosignature, which are the kinds of things we're searching for in the atmospheres of planets with the James Webb Space Telescope. So for example, a specific molecule that might be present in the atmosphere that indicates that life exists on that planet. That's any sign of life, whether intelligent or not. Whereas techno signatures focuses on the technology side of things, mostly communications. So perhaps an advanced alien civilization that's sending communications between the ground on their planet up to satellites and beyond. So to keep an eye on a million of the closest stars to us, the Breakthrough Listen Project uses radio light telescopes around the world from the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia to the Parkes Radio Telescope in New South Wales to the Meerkat Telescope in the Northern Cape of South Africa. And back in the spring of 2019, the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia was used to keep an eye on Proxima Centauri. 
the closest star to the sun, which back in 2016, Anglada Eskide and collaborators had announced they found an Earth-like planet in the habitable zone orbiting that star. Habitable zone meaning the area around the star where if you did have a planet in orbit there then it would be receiving just the right amount of energy from the star so that it would be not too hot and not too cold for liquid water to exist on that planet. But because Proxima Centauri, the star, is a red dwarf star, so much cooler and much smaller than the sun, those planets have to orbit a lot closer into the star to be in the habitable zone. But the closer into the star you get, the more you could just be getting completely irradiated by high energy radiation flares that come off the star. So while the discovery of that planet was a very exciting one, it wasn't a given that that planet would be hospitable to life. But we have to check these things in, you know, all the ways that are available to us. So the Breakthrough Listen project was searching for any radio light signals coming from Proxima Centauri that drifted in frequency because of a Doppler shift. A Doppler shift is what happens when an ambulance races past you. So its siren is giving out this sound wave and as the ambulance comes towards you, that sound wave gets squished because the ambulance is moving and you hear that as a higher pitch. And then as it moves away from you, that sound wave gets stretched out because the ambulance is moving away as it gives out the sound wave wave and you hear that as a lower pitch. The same thing can happen to light waves as can happen to sound waves. So as an object emits radio light and it moves towards us, the, the radio light wave gets squished to shorter wavelengths and then stretched out to longer wavelengths as it moves away from us. Then that can be a really good indication that what you spotted is not coming from Earth because it is moving differently to the things on Earth. But there are a lot of junk signals in these searches that come from interference or communications between our own satellites orbiting Earth that are also moving. So another trick that they use in these techno signature searches is to look at the star for a while and then move off the star and look at something else and see if the signal sticks around or if it disappears. Then go back to the star, see if the signal comes back. Move off it again, does it disappear? Move back to the star, does it come back? So these drifting signals that disappear when you're off source versus on source are what the Breakthrough Listen projects are searching for because it's what we expect signals of advanced civilizations to look like. And most of the time they search and they search and they search through millions of signals, but they don't find anything. But back in 2019, they found this signal dubbed BLC1, Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, that lasted for over 30 hours, which due to the sort of like radio telescope pointing sensitivity, you can't be directly sure where exactly it's coming from, just a general region. And this region was around about half the size of the full moon around Proxima Centauri on the sky. And after a few years of careful analysis, the Breakthrough team eventually published these three papers at the same time. One from Smith and collaborators describing the detection, one from Sheik and collaborators saying that they never detected it again, and another from Sheik and collaborators describing the analysis of BLC1, with all three papers concluding that BLC1 was not a real techno signature and instead was coming from radio light emitted by human communications here on Earth. The problem though was that those three papers weren't the first that the public heard of BLC1. The fact that it had been detected and that Breakthrough were doing all this careful analysis of it was announced to the press in December 2020. And I think that's what most people remember about BLC1 just because of the sheer amount of media coverage it got at the time. So much more than the coverage of the sort of papers in 2021 that said actually it's just radio interference. Because let's face it, a big news headline of astronomers might have found aliens drives a lot more engagement than, oops, never mind, no they didn't. Which brings me to section two. How do we actually know then that this isn't a real techno signature and that it's actually just interference from something here on Earth? Or as Sheik and collaborators put it, an electronically drifting intermodulation product of local time varying interferers aligned with the observing cadence. Now the first big giveaway for the Breakthrough team was that they went back through all of their data and searched through it for signals that looked similar to BLC1 that were actually drifting at the same rate with time and they actually found 30 of them. 
They were not coming from Proxima Centauri, but were detected when the telescope was pointed at other parts of the sky and were very clearly all interference from something Earth-based. Sheikin collaborators also found something known as a frequency comb in the signal data from BLC1, which is a hallmark of radio frequency interference, also known as RFI, i.e. it's coming somewhere from us on Earth and not from aliens. The question though was, what was producing this radio frequency interference here on Earth then? And Sheikin collaborators did consider a huge range of sources, from interference from the telescope itself, to transmitters on the ground communicating with airplanes for example, to satellite transmitters, or transmitters even on deep space probes, but none of those explanations quite fit the data they had on BLC1 perfectly, so instead they said it was most likely that it was sort of a, a new like modern signal generator that can vary in frequency that was roughly in the direction that the telescope was pointing towards Proxima Centauri, which is why when they went off axis and came back again they didn't really detect the signal at the time. But there's no real way to pin down exactly where it came from, they just know it came from Earth somewhere near the Parkes radio telescope. But the real nail in the coffin for BLC1 is the fact that it has never been detected again. Sheikin collaborators published another paper detailing the extra 39 hours of observing time of Proxima Centauri that they took over six months that did not result in any techno signatures being detected. Which I know many of you will be disappointed by, but what BLC1 has given us and the Breakthrough Listen team is a much tighter procedure for confirming whether a promising signal is interference or a real techno signature. They've been through it now, there's lessons been learned so that they can be extra sure if they ever do find evidence of a real alien techno signature in the future. Okay, it's time to take out the rubbish, is what we'd actually say in the UK, but it sounds stupid when you put it that way. It's time to take out the trash. Sounds better. <sighs> he is trash, 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 trash. Now the first, ow, oh, I scratched a spot on the side of my head and that really hurt. Oh, anyway, extra short. I've got a really itchy top lip. I thought that was just gonna be a really like quick, small itch. No, it's turned into itch the whole thing. Oh.